Hmm. So conscience, it looks like fans really like when we cover iconic PlayStation characters. Oh yeah? Yeah, like the Kratos video did really well, and both the Dante and Nero video got a lot of love. I think we need to follow this wave, bro. Huh. I mean, we could always do Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck that. No, but really though, we need something old school. We need to tackle a game that's been forgotten, but is still close to our hearts. We need, we need something like, I got it. What up class? Welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History. In this week's lecture, we'll be covering In the beginning, there were beings known as the Precursors. The Precursors were the most powerful beings in the universe. Using a form of energy known as Ego, the Precursors created this planet and many others. They're like the Greek gods, except they don't go around knocking up mortals and stealing people's brothers. As the world progressed, Ego started being used as a power source for pretty much anything. And they came in different colors too, with each color capable of doing something different. With the world progressing, people progressed too. Humans started studying and manipulating Eco. These gifted individuals became known as sages. Although Eco seems like this amazing form of energy, there was one form of Eco that was extremely unstable and destructive. Dark Eco. Dark Eco is like regular Eco. If regular Eco had cancer. Now with the background junk out of the way, let's fast forward to the present time where we see Jack, our mute hero, and Daxter, the annoying sidekick, making their way to Misty Island, a place that their mentor, the green eco sage Samos, told them not to go to. The duo begins to investigate the island and spot two mysterious figures talking to these creatures called Lurkers. Lurkers are one of the many assholes of this tale. They attack villages, people, basically do everything they can to ruin lives. The duo catches part of the conversation and decides to just walk away from the whole situation. As they continue investigating Misty Island, they run into an armored lurker. In self-defense, Jack throws a canister of Dark Eco at the lurker which kills it, but also inadvertently throws Daxter into a pool of Dark Eco. However, Daxter does not die. Instead, he re-emerges as a creature known as an Otso. You see what happens when you do dumb shit? Look at that, furry cancer. Concerned, Jack and Daxter make their way back to their home in Sandover Village to talk to Samos. Samos is like, see what happens when you don't listen to me? Look at you, furry cancer. Unfortunately, Samos has no way of curing Daxter, but he does know someone who can. There is a sage who studies dark ego named Gaul. He would be their best bet to cure Daxter. And getting to Gaul won't be that simple, because this is a game. And games like making you work for no reason. See. Gaul lives very far away, and they can't simply get to his place by foot. Luckily, Samus' daughter Kira built something called an A-Grav Zoomer. The Zoomer could be used as a means of transportation to help Jack and Daxter travel and collect paracels, which are needed because... PLOT! They're needed because of plot! Let's be honest, guys. Every game needs a little collectible you accumulate over time to make you feel like you're doing something. That's what power cells are to Jack and Daxter. So whenever you hear me mention power cell, think collectible. Anyways, with this information, our protagonists grab Kira Zoomer and head out. On their journey, they do the normal adventure game thing. Traveling to different places and doing favors for a bunch of people. Hey man, wanna pick up my poop? I'll give you 20 power cells for it. In the middle of their quest, they finally run into Gaul and his sister Maya, but he is not the helpful sage that they thought he was. For one, they realize that Gaul and Maya were the mysterious figures that were giving a speech to those lurkers. And Gaul's speech went a little something like, Yo, if you see a human, beat they ass. On top of that, Gaul has been out here kidnapping all the eco sages to drain their power and use it to fuel the precursor robot that he is building. He wants to use this robot to dismantle the dark eco silo and flood the world with dark eco. Why the hell would you want to do that? After disclosing his whole plan to our heroes, he dips. Jack is like... Daxter is like, welp, can't have that. Then our heroes head over to Gaul's base to take him down. As they are fighting Gaul, the different forms of eco from all the stages combine to form a new form of eco that is white. This eco is powerful enough to take out Gaul for good, but it can also be used to turn Daxter back to normal. Jack and Daxter agree that furry cancer is not that bad, then use a new form of eco to put an end to Gaul. 
after their skirmish, they discover the Precursor door, an ancient artifact left back from the Precursors. They decide to open it, and within it they find the Rift Rider and the Rift Gate. So the Rift Gate is basically a portal that allows you to travel to other realms. The Rift Rider is a vehicle that you use to control the Rift Gate and allows you to travel through the Rift Gate safely. So Samos, Kira, Jack, and Daxter decide to mess around and open the Rift Gate. Then all hell breaks loose. These beasts called Metalheads bust through the Rift Gate and start invading Sandover Village. Team Jack is like, damn, that sucks. Then they go through the Rift Gate and leave Sandover Village to the mercy of these Metalheads. Y'all are savages. The other end of the Rift Gate opens, and Jack and Daxter are thrown into a mysterious place called Haven City. Upon their arrival, Fellas from the Crimson Guard go ahead and arrest Jack for what looks like absolutely no reason. Now I could make a joke about the political climate of the US from this, but I won't. Luckily, Daxter escapes before they could capture him. Two years go by, and throughout these two years, Daxter has done all that he can to find and rescue Jack. While Daxter was on the search in his own spin-off game, Jack was being tortured. It turns out that Haven City is at war with the Metalheads, so out of desperation, Baron Praxis, the ruler of Haven City, developed the Dark Warrior program. In this program, he injects innocent beings with Dark Eagle to try and turn them into the perfect, ruthless soldier. Jack was lucky enough to be thrown into this program for two years! So Jack was obviously super hype about this. So hype, in fact, that when Daxter found him, he spouted his first words. I'm gonna kill Praxis! Oh, well, at least we know what he sounds like. Daxter frees Jack and all that Dark Eco in his system temporarily transforms him into a being called Dark Jack. But seeing his best friend help them fight the darkness and go back to his regular form. The two escape the Crimson Guard facility and run into an old man named Kor, who is accompanied by a mysterious little boy. Kor tells them about a secret group of freedom fighters known as the Underground that are trying to fight against the rule of Baron Praxis. Interested, Jack asks for more information and Kor tells him to go to their hideout and ask for a man named Torn. Jack and Daxter make their way to the Underground's hideout and meet up with Torn. The duo asks Torn if they can meet the leader of the Underground, the Shadow. But unfortunately, Torn's kind of a dick. He's all like, Oh, you're not worthy enough to meet the Shadow. If you want to meet him, you have to prove yourself. Which is code for, Do me some dumbass favors until I feel like letting you meet my boss. So Jack and Daxter end up completing a multitude of quests for Torn. Then, through one mission, Jack and Daxter find out that the Crimson Guards are giving Barrels of Eco to the Metalheads. That's not good. The duo tells Torn about this news, and as a response, he sends them to meet Crew and his bodyguard Sig for more information. Now, Sig is cool. Crew is a fat f. They then have to do a bunch of quests for Crew, meet Ashlyn Praxis, the daughter of Baron Praxis and friend of Torn, and then eventually find out the truth about the Baron. This dude is working with the Metalheads to keep his citizens oppressed. He gives them some eco on the Lolo, and in return they attack the city just enough times to scare its citizens to making them feel like they need the Baron's protection. But the city is running out of eco, so the Metalheads are getting kinda impatient. This is not how you run a city, dipshit. Crew sends Jack to meet a mysterious racing manager to learn about some racing championship being held in the city. The manager also happens to be a mechanic who is working on a secret project. Although she is super dismissive of Jack and my boy Daxter, she lets them know that the winner of the racing championship gets a tour of the palace of Haven City, which means that if Jack wins, he gets immediate access to the headquarters of his enemies, which also means that Jack will be able to find the Baron and beat his ass. All of a sudden, this racing idea sounds super lit. So until the racing championship actually goes down, Jack and Daxter continue doing favors for Torn. Really though? My boys have been doing this dude's dirty work for how long now? How many dumbass favors does it take to make you worthy? F this Torn guy, man. Especially since throughout this whole game, Jack is constantly at war with the Dark Eco inside of him. They're doing my boy Jack dirty. While doing multiple favors for Torn, the duo ends up finding something very peculiar outside of the city walls. They find Samos' old hut. You know, they're home from the original Jack and Daxter game. But why would Samos' hut be here? And why does it look so old? After some thought, the answer hits them like a brick wall. The Rift Gate that they used two years ago didn't just take them to another place, it took them to the future. Those metalheads they released attacked the world and caused this future. Which technically means that Team Jack's curiosity caused this whole mess. Good job, guys. After this huge plot twist, the two finally get to meet the Shadow. But guess who he is? It's Samos! But younger, and he doesn't know who Jack or Daxter is. 
Samos tells a duo that the boy they met a while ago is actually extremely important because he is heir to the House of Mar, the true ruler of Haven City. Now you're probably wondering, what the hell is a Mar, and why does this make him the true ruler of Haven City? Well, Mar was an ancient hero chosen by the precursors to protect the world. He founded the ruling dynasty of Haven City and created a weapon to destroy the Metalheads. And this kid is his descendant. And they now need this kid because the only hope they have of defeating the Metalheads and Praxis is to use Mar's weapon. And Mar's weapon is powered by the Precursor Stone, which is located in the tomb of Mar, which can only be accessed by a descendant of Mar. Ergo, they need this kid to save the world. So our heroes take the kid to the tomb of Mar where he has to pass the trials of manhood. But guess what? To take the trials of manhood, you have to actually be a, you know, a man. Then Jack uses the kid to unlock the tomb, then just jumps in it himself. Jack passes the trials of manhood and is about to procure the precursor stone. But then bitch ass Praxis shows up and steals the shit. Dick. And just when you think things couldn't get any worse, the duo returns to the underground's hideout to find out that Torrent sold all them out to protect Ashlyn. Now a bunch of the underground is in prison, all for some pussy. And just a few weeks ago, you were talking about how Jack and Daxter weren't worthy enough to meet the shadow. So Jack has to go save those guys, but something good comes out of all this. Jack and Daxter find Samos, like the old Samos, the one they know. So young Samos and old Samos meet up and they conclude that Praxis wants to destroy the Precursor Stone. I mean, the good thing is that destroying the stone will kill the Metalheads. The bad thing is that it will destroy the whole world too. So yeah, not the best idea. So now Jack and Daxter need to get into the palace as soon as possible. Luckily, they still have the races a chance to enter. They go back to the racing manager, who was actually revealed to be Kira if that wasn't obvious enough, and she lets them know that her whole secret project was to create a new Rift Rider. It's almost done, but she needs a few more parts. Jack promises to get her these parts, then goes to the race. Now before we continue, let me tell you about this dude Errol real quick. Errol is a leader of the Crimson Guard, and he originally helped Praxis with the Dark Warrior program. Ever since Jack decided to start racing, he's been one-upping Errol every chance he gets. So now Errol's salty ass in the racing championship, and all he wants to do is take out Jack. But he fails, and Jack wins, and then he crashes into a bunch of eco, and dies. Unfortunately, Baron Praxis completely denies Jack his prize of getting a tour of the palace, so he has to get in by force. There, Ashlyn stops him, and is like, why are you making life harder for my daddy? He's only trying to do good and kill the metalheads. Jack is like, bitch, your daddy is trying to crack the precursor stone and destroy everything. I'm trying to save everything. Ashlyn is like, oh damn, yeah, my daddy's stupid. Then she lets the duo know that Crew is building a bomb for Praxis meant to destroy the Precursor Stone. Jack is like, well, can't have that. Then the duo go to Crew and they beat his ass. And he dies. Jack and Naxxer then grab the last two parts Kira needs for her Rift Rider remake, but find out that the Metalheads have breached the city. Aw shit. They then go to confront Baron Praxis, but then Kor shows up. You remember Kor, he was that old guy that was with the mysterious kid. Well, it turns out that Kor is the freaking leader of the Metalheads. So Praxis goes all gun ho and tries to defeat Kor, but Kor bodies him, then he dies. Damn, a lot of people die in this game. However, before he dies, he lets Jack know about a second bomb that he created. Jack defuses that bomb, grabs the precursor stone, then finally goes to confront the true antagonist. Kor. But before they fight, Kor reveals the biggest twist of the century. That kid, the heir to the throne of Mar, is actually Jack's younger self. Holy shit! So essentially this means that Jack created this whole metalhead problem to begin with, but when he was a kid, as a descendant of Mar, they thought he could fix this problem. So they sent him into the past to become the hero that started this whole problem. So basically Jack is cleaning up his own mess. Pretty much. So Jack ends up defeating Kor, then they send young Samos and Jack to the past to continue the time loop. And then, they all live happily ever after. Well, until Jack 3 comes out. God damn it! So sometime after the events of Jack 2, Crimson Guard Deathbots and the remains of the Metalhead population re-emerge to take over the city. Count Baker, a member of the Grand Council of Haven City, saw this as his chance to banish Jack from the city. You see, Baker is a salty ass bitch. He doesn't like Jack because of his connection to Dark Eco, so he blames all of Haven City's problems on him, even though my nigga saved the city not too long ago. So Jack is banished to the wastelands outside of Haven City, and is accompanied by Daxter and Pecker, a friend they made in Jack 2. Jack and friends end up fainting from fatigue, but they are found by Damus, the leader of a town known as Spargus. Once Jack and Daxter awaken, 
They are greeted by Damus, and he's like, Listen, bitches, I saved y'all, so now I own y'all. You do quests for me from now on. Our heroes have no other choice, so they accept these terms, thus leading to a multitude of quests meant to prove their worth to Damus. During their time serving Damus and earning his love and respect, they run into a monk named Seam, who really does not like Jack because of all that dark ego he has inside of him. Seam warns Jack about the Daystar and about how the world is coming to an end. Jack just chalks her up as being another hater and leaves her be. He also begins to learn about Light Eco, which balances out the Dark Eco lying within him. Later on, the heroic duo run into Ashlyn. She begs Jack to come back to Haven City. The combined forces of the KG Deathbots and the Metalheads are too much for the good guys to handle. Jack is like, Bitch, I saved your dumbass city and then you repay me by throwing me into the desert? Without food? That whole city can suck on my left nut. But after some time, Jack does come back to Haven City to assist his friends in their time of need. Jack's too nice to leave his bros hanging. Jack and Daxer work together with their former allies to slowly take down the KG Deathbots and the Metalheads. After a few missions in Haven City, they find out that the leader of both the remaining Metalheads and the KG Deathbots is Errol. That salty ass bitch that Jack kept embarrassing. Somehow he's returned to cause Jack even more trouble. With the situation getting more dire, Jack and Daxter continue trying to fix this whole KG Deathbot and Metalhead issue. But through their endeavors, they find out about another threat. Aw shit. So there are these beings known as the Dark Makers. They are former precursors who were tainted by Dark Eco. The Daystar that C mentioned is actually their ship, and now they're coming to attack the world. So now Jack has to worry about Errol, his army, and the Dark Makers? I would just quit. Luckily, there is a way to stop them. Nice! Jack needs to activate the planetary defense system made by the precursors to destroy the Dark Makers. Sounds easy enough. But the system is within the core of the Earth. Of course it is. So now, it's time for Jack to start officially taking out his enemies, starting with Errol. Jack and Daxter confront the new cybernetic Errol. They find out that he is working with the Dark Makers, so they fight him, but he manages to escape like the bitch he is. Jack ends up revisiting Damus, and with all the work that Jack has put in throughout the game, Damus finally deems him as a worthy ally. He's extremely proud of Jack's efforts. He sees him like a son. Like a son. Like a son. Stop trying to ruin shit, don't you? We'll get to that. Anyways, Jack and Daxter start heading over to the Precursor Core to activate the planetary defense system. On the way, they are ambushed, but Damus jumps in to help out. After a fierce battle, Jack and Damus are overpowered, which leads to Damus' untimely and unfortunate death. Before he dies, however, he begs Jack to find his son and tells him that his son is the heir to the House of Mar. Sound familiar? Yup! Jack is Damus' son, and his real name is Mar, but Damus died before Jack could even tell him. Then Vagra's bitch ass shows up to tell Jack even more info. Vagra was the one that took Jack away from his father. He wanted to harness Jack's affinity for Eco, but Jack was taken by the underground before that could happen. With that being said, Vagar leaves to enter the Precursor Core. Furious, Jack follows Vagar to the Core. Once Jack and Daxter enter the Core, they successfully begin the activation of the defense system. As thanks, a Precursor shows up and offers Jack the chance to evolve into one of them. But before he can even respond to this request, Salty ass Vagar shows up and demands that he should be blessed with the chance to become a Precursor. The Precursor accepts Vagar's wish and grants him the power. So, Vagar wins? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. After the Precursor begins to argue with itself, it reveals its true form. The Precursors are actually a bunch of Otzels, just like Daxter. Oh my god. So this whole time, the universe was being run and protected by a bunch of rodents? Yup, pretty much. Eh, I can dig it. Still better than having a universe run by conniving ass gods that continue to do you dirty. Man, you really don't like the Greek gods, do you? They did my boy Kratos dirty. F them niggas. So the precursors still have to respect Vagar's wish, and they turn him into an Otzel. Then, they send Jack to go and confront Errol on the Dark Maker ship. After a long climactic battle, our heroes manage to stop Errol, and the planetary defense system puts an end to the Dark Maker ship. With the world at peace once again, the Precursors reopen their offer to allow Jack to become a Precursor himself. Jack decides to stay with his boy Daxter, and the two live happily ever after. Really? Nope! On to Jack X, Combat Racing. F after one year of peace, Haven City has been rebuilt, and the combat racing that was a staple in the last two Jack and Daxter games became a common sport in a new city called Crash City. So they just took a minigame from the original trilogy and decided to make a game off of it. Cool.
Jack, Daxter, Samos, Kira, Torn, and Ashton are all invited to Crash City to listen to Crew's last will. You guys remember Crew. He's that fat ass that kind of helped Jack out in Jack 2. But fortunately, he died. Crew's daughter, Wayne, leaves the meeting and plays a recording of Crew's will. Wait, wait, wait. Crew had a daughter? Like, like a living daughter. Somebody touched that shit? Yes, Doji. Now, can we please continue with this plot? All right, all right. I just, I just didn't think that it was possible for someone to do the nasty with him. Like, ew. So in Crew's recording, he states that Jack and his friends have been poisoned. The only way to get the cure is if they win the Crash City Grand Championship. Without much of a choice, Jack and friends enter the championship. As the game progresses, they find out about another criminal named Mizo. Apparently, before Crew's death, Mizo and Crew made a bet where they would create two different racing teams. The racing team that wins the Crash City Championship would decide which criminal family could stay in the city. So basically, Crew is using Team Jack to make sure that his family is still the dominant one in Crash City. Even in death. This dude is still a conniving, fat asshole. Short story shorter, Team Jack, or rather Team Crew, wins the championship and Mizo ends up dying. Because why not? Then Jack and friends find out that Rain knew about the poison. She followed Crew's instructions and made sure not to drink the poison herself so that she could run the family business. Team Jack just kinda let this go. Then Kira finally kisses Jack. The end. Well... No. We're not really... No conscience. On to Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier. God damn it! Sometime after the events of Jack X, our heroes find out that the world is going through an eco shortage. Because of this shortage, the world is basically tearing itself apart. So Jack, Kira, and Daxter go on a quest to find a new source of eco for the world. On the way, they are attacked by a group of pirates led by a man named Phoenix. The battle does more damage than their ship can take, so they crash land onto an unknown island. There, they conveniently find an eco crystal that can power their ship. As they begin to continue their quest for more eco, they spot another ship being attacked by more pirates. Jack is like, Welp, can't have that. Then they save the ship. They are greeted by the captain of the ship and leader of a land known as Europa, a man named Skyheed. Skyheed invites them back to Europa and shows them the Eco Seeker, an ancient form of precursor technology that can track major sources of Eco. But giving our heroes the answer to their problem in the beginning of the game would be too easy. So not only does the Eco Seeker not work, but it's stolen by Phoenix and his band of pirates. Kira jumps after him, but she is kidnapped in the process. God damn it, Kira. Jack and Daxter eventually find her, but it turns out that she is now siding with this Phoenix dude. Jack is like, what the f you're supposed to be my woman! But Kira explains that they all need to work together to fix this Eco Seeker and find a new source of Eco. So, like the last few games, Jack and the squad go on a multitude of missions to find the parts needed to fix the Eco Seeker. After some time, Jack finds out about a dark seeker relating to Europa. Apparently, Sky Heed was messing around with Dark Eco and wanted to do something similar to the Dark Warrior program done in Jack 2. However, Sky Heed went a little overboard and infected everyone in Europa with Dark Eco. Phoenix worked under Sky Heed during this time, but he rebelled and became a pirate once he found out what Sky Heed was up to. So essentially, Sky Heed is the actual antagonist, and Phoenix is officially Jack's new ally. Yay! Friendship. Eventually, the team fixes the Eco Seeker and find an Eco Core. But Skyheed gets to it and begins to drain it of its energy to become a dark eco monster. Short story shorter, again, Team Jack manages to defeat Skyheed and activate the eco core which fills the world with eco once again. Then, they live happily ever after. Really? Yes, don't she? It's over. Thank God. This shit was long as f Thank you so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History, guys. I'm sorry, I know I did not cover everything in the Jack and Daxter storyline, but Jesus Christ, is this story long. So obviously I couldn't cover every single little detail. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe so you stay updated with all my other Honest Gaming History episodes. Let me know who else you want me to cover in the next episode of Honest Gaming History in the comment section below. Huge shout out to Avatar ALCH, Mindwire, and all my other lower patrons who make videos like this possible with their kind monthly donations. If you are not already a patron but would like to become one, Go to my Patreon page down below and find out how you could support the channel for as small as $1 a month, bro. And also, down below me, you could watch another episode of Honest Gaming History. I know you want to. Go watch that shit. You love it. So with all that being said, be easy, stay lit, and take care.